All right, so um, what I want to do today is I want to just take a chance to talk through uh, in Touch Designer how we think about working with edge blending and uh, dealing with questions of geometry and then how we stick those two things together um, to deal with more complex systems um, with multiple projectors. So we're going to start this by taking a look at uh, this concept of edge blending <clears throat> and what that actually means and how we make that work. And, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> to make this work we only need a couple simple components. Uh, we're going to deal mostly with textures, so we need a movie in, um, so we need some kind of input source. Um, we need to have a ramp, and the ramp acts as our um, kind of fade on either side. We need a composite, and we need a transform. And it's these four um, tools here, these four uh, operators, that are really going to let us do all of the edge blending work that we're probably going to need to do. Um, and I'll show you, I'm going to walk through what this process looks like here in Touch Designer and how we can kind of proof it. And then uh, we'll talk later about what that looks like in terms of um, actually dealing with some outputs. So I've already got a couple things set up here, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this sample network and <clears throat> recreate it and talk our way through it, so we get a, real, uh, a better sense of how it works. So I'm going to start just by copying uh, my input texture here. I'm going to drop that back in, pull it down over here. Now this input um, operator can be just about any kind of uh, texture, video, picture, you name it. Um, so this is really just a kind of generic input uh, to try and get some imagery into touch designers. So this could be video, it could be a live stream, it could be really anything. So the next thing I'm going to want to have here is I want to have a ramp um, because what I want to do in thinking about doing some edge blending is I'm thinking about how I'm going to use this texture as a input and how I'm going to uh, give myself a nice soft edge on one side of this so that I can blend um, this image together. Um, but I've got a couple problems with this ramp, uh, taking a look at it uh, as we get started here. One of the first things I want is I actually want to have a uh, horizontal instead of a vertical style of ramp. So over here in the parameters page for the ramp, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to toggle this to horizontal instead of vertical. And one of the other things I want to fix here is instead of having this ramp um, with the colors, uh, with the gradient spread out so far, I want to actually condense the gradient here a little bit to make this work better. So I'm going to add in two more points here um, in the actual gradient itself, and these are going to give me some sliders to be able to control uh, the density of this gradient and the location of this gradient. And you'll notice that one of the things I've got to do here is I've got to make sure that um, my black value is set to true black, and my white value is set to true white. So now I really have some better control about over the placement of this gradient and where it's going to actually rest here on my uh, texture. The next thing that I'm going to do um, is I'm going to introduce a composite uh, top. And the composite top is going to let me to smash these two puppies together. So I'm, first I'm going to grab um, my original texture here, my dome texture, as an input. I can see that I've got this little red X letting me know that I'm not actually doing anything with this composite right now. If I uh, left click and hold, I can see that the error I'm getting is that there are not enough sources, sources specified. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my ramp input here. I'm going to dump that into my comp. <coughs> and now I can see that I've got this funny little um, problem happening here where I've got the parameters, or the um, resolution parameters of the wrong input variable. And I can change that by going to the uh, common tab here. Uh, I can set a custom resolution, so I can tell it which one that I want to actually use. I can pick a, a resolution as an uh, input, an eighth quarter, etc. of those things. Or one of the things I can do here is I can see that this dome texture um, or I can see that ramp here on the bottom is the one that's actually controlling here. If I just bump that up to the top, what I'm doing is I'm swapping the um, layer of these inputs, or the order of these inputs, rather. 
Uh, and that's going to allow me to actually, it's another way to control uh, which one of these is controlling the aspect ratio here. So now that I've got um, a kind of nice composite here, and I'm using the multiply function so that I've got this nice dark um, kind of fade to black over here at the edge as a kind of masking black. This is great, but this doesn't really do me a whole lot of good because this is only a piece of the puzzle, right? So if I'm thinking about how I combine multiple uh, inputs, it's not really doing me any good. So the next thing I need to do is I'm going to need another composite top here. I'm going to drag this into here. And now I really need another ramp also. Um, I can reuse the same ramp that I created this first time. Um, if I know that I want the edges, or the density of the edges to be the same. But if there's a chance that I might want to have uh, a different density, especially in this amount of gradient distribution, what I really want to do is I really want to have uh, another ramp in here. So I'm going to go ahead and I could add another ramp like this, but now I've got to make all of the same parameter changes. Another thing I could do is I could just highlight, copy, paste, to have another one of these. So I'm going to bring that, that down here, connect those, take a look at my inputs, swap my inputs, and now another one of the problems I can see that I'm going to have uh, just looking at this is that I've got my ramp location on the same side for both of these uh, inputs, or both of these comps. Um, and that's not going to do me any good because I don't want to edge blend the same edge. Um, so what I'm going to do uh, to look at how to change that is I can do a couple of, well I've got a lot of different methods that I could use um, to fix this particular problem. So I might come in here and I could, for example, um, here in my ramp tab I could change this to be black, I could change this to be white, I could change this over here to be white, this is an awful lot of steps uh, to just reverse those two colors. Whew. Um, I think that is too much work, if you ask me. Another way to fix that particular problem is I can actually just use uh, another one of my, another top. I can use the transform top. Uh, and here in Touch Designer, one of the methodologies for, uh, or one of the methods for making changes in strings is I can right click on my actual um, connecting um, bridge here, my little network, and I can insert another operator. And I'm going to insert the transform operator here. Um, transform allows me to do all sorts of transformations, shifts, changes, all of those kinds of things. Um, so what I want to do here is I'm going to come in to my rotate parameter and I'm going to come over to my Z rotate and I can see that I'm able to rotate that texture around. So let's just come in here and give this a negative 180 degrees. And now I've just flopped um, my the location of my gradient. So now that I've got my two uh, composited or my two comps here that are ready to sit on top of one another, I can start to think about what these two might look like if I composite the two of them together because that's really going to, what I'm going to want to have to do um, with my projectors. Now in a production environment what I might think about doing is I might actually think about just taking this um, and sending these out two different outs to two different projectors and then uh, looking at how I'm going to edge blend them, um, smush them together. Uh, but we can kind of do a little bit of visualization to get a sense of how Touch Designer is going to work with that um, by looking here inside of the programming environment itself. Now if I click on my little render flag here, it's going to render my uh, scene in the background and I can see what's happening. And at first glance I can see that I'm not really doing what I want. So I've got this uh, multiplied section here in the middle and I've got two uh, dark sections on the edges, and that's really not at all what I wanted. What I need to do here is I need to insert another transform operator. Let's 
so then I can make some horizontal changes to the location of my uh, media. So in Touch Designer, uh, by default, this is set to move as a fraction. I can also change this to move as a, a number of pixels. So I have either way to work with that here. Um, and you also, if you've got a three button mouse, you can middle click right here inside of your uh, field and you can select the power that you want to move these things by. So you can see here by clicking and holding down and dragging left or right, I'm able to change this value. So I'm going to move this puppy over here to the left. I'm going to come up to this transform. I'm going to move this one over to the right. And I can see here in my uh, two transforms that I've successfully moved this left and right, but for some reason it's not showing up here in my composite. And the reason that's happening is that I'm using the multiply function instead of the additive function. So I can change which kind of operator I'm using here just with this drop down menu. From here, I'm able again to look at how these are sitting on top of one another and make any fine tuning adjustments to the edge blending that I'm going to want to be doing. So you can see we can take a look again at this network. It should be just about a carbon copy of this top one. That I've started with my single input. I've got um, a ramp and a transform to make my some changes here. I'm using that, I'm running that through a composite top, another transform top, and then my uh, final composite is just a way for me to look at what's actually going on. Uh, another thing to consider in terms of edge blending is that if I'm dealing with multiple projectors, if I'm just dealing with projectors that are aligned um, beside one another, I might only have to deal with horizontal edge blending. Depending on the stack of my projectors, I might also think about vertical edge blending. And I could, in my ramp parameters, I could change the uh, orientation of the ramp to be horizontal. I could change it from horizontal to vertical.